All right, so today we're gonna turn a pile of scrap metal and some random Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace junk into a set of uh, new bomber seats and seat risers for the 48. So let me turn you around and I'll show you what I'm talking about. We're gonna take all of this junk, some old Kirky aluminum seats. Those will eventually get punched out and get some uh, leather inserts and a bunch of other stuff, do some speed holes in it some seat mounts that I fabricated up, some bases for these are like $29 a piece at Summit. And this is a bunch of three quarter inch square tube that I picked up off of uh, Marketplace for like a dollar a piece or something. So anyways, we're gonna take all of this junk and turn it into this. This contraption right here took far too long to build. It's probably overly complicated and uh, it's certainly going to end up being overbuilt so i made this entire structure to replace the old bench seat and get these seats raised up high enough there will eventually be a center console that runs front to back that i will build and attach to this uh, seat riser i'll probably put plates so that it kind of bolts in as a modular thing um, but yeah it's gonna it's gonna work out pretty well you still see these are not permanently attached to this yet I gotta wait till I get it in the car and then that way I can set you know the height on it exactly where I want it once I have the padding and the seat bottoms and stuff in these because driving around an aluminum seat in Texas in the summer not a thing not a thing at all so got to get some kind of uh, at least some leather or something in there that is not just boiling hot aluminum in the uh, summer Sun so anyways I'll show you how I did all that stuff. Uh, it's fairly simple and uh, ignore the crappy welds. I am a grinder, not a welder. Um, so yeah, everything's structurally sound, but it's just not pretty. But anyways, I'll, uh, I'll show you how I get that into there and how I made it along the way. All right, so I'm in the shop on a nice balmy, uh, 20 some odd degree day there's snow and ice and sleet and all kinds of terribleness that Texans don't like at all especially after last year um, seven degree wind chill 34 degrees in the shop though so you know nice and toasty warm um, anyways what I'm gonna do today is start laying out uh, seat bases and sliders these are the most generic cheapest sliders you can get from Summit um, for the 48 so it's gonna be kind of a contraption that's raised up on some square tube and I'm gonna try and shape it up to meet the bottom here and then give me a flat part and then see if I can't also add some adjustability for tilt and lean so that I can kind of get right dialed in where I think it's most comfortable to drive. Um, I'll tie that in with some, I'm gonna do a sheet metal cowl that's raised up or a, a transmission tunnel uh, center console and uh, which means I gotta do a bunch of weird stuff to get the shifter which is if you're sitting in the car, it's way down here next to the firewall. It's only about that long. Um, so I could make an extended one that comes up and around and then make some kind of um, stop so that catches it so it doesn't just wobble all over the place. So we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But first things first is I got to kind of lay out how I'm going to get it, uh, get these bolted to this. And then once I have that where they're, they're flat and I can adjust uh, my tilt and lean, then I will build the platform that's going to raise up and we'll bolt those two pieces together. Um, or I'll use the bottoms of those to weld off of to make the bottom. I don't know yet. We'll see how that goes. So anyways, I'm going to flip you around kind of show you how I'm going to mark this out. Uh, you've seen Fitzy do stuff like this for his frame recently for Krusty uh, and other stuff like that. I'm just going to draw it out uh, down here. Let's see if you can see. Uh, I'm just going to draw it right here onto the sheet metal and then I'll, I'll make my marks accordingly. Once I have one that kind of fits this contour nicely, I'll just use that as a template and I'll make three more. That way I'll have four, two for each side of each of the front seats. Um, that, like I said, that structure in the bottom will probably tie in to the center console, which I plan on carrying all the way from the front, all the way through the back and making two almost like built-in bucket seats out of aluminum that kind of match up to this. We'll also, in all of this, we'll go through and put some speed holes and, and stuff in here and just kind of hot rod it up a little bit. So anyway, let's turn around and show you what to do. All 
All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw this shape out on here to set this in the car and kind of found that the, the lean that I really kind of like is just about with this portion. So normally you'd put this in there and as a race seat, you'd be fairly straight up and then this would turn up like that. But I kind of like the recline position here. I like this part where it's, it's fairly straight. I'm still gonna add padding in this so I can adjust that up a little bit. But that's another reason I want to add some, uh, probably some screws or set screws in there where I can, I can just manually set this how I want inside the car. But I'm gonna base it on this being square. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna kinda just eyeball it since I do plan on making this adjustable. I'm gonna try and eyeball it and make this edge here and these two points fairly square. And then uh, once I have that, I'm just gonna trace all the way around I'm just going to set my sharpie flat and go all the way around and now i know that i'll have to just connect the dots there a little bit So as you can see, I've drawn out and traced along here. Um, I've gone and used the bottom of my seat to mark the areas where there were bends. Those correspond with these angled bends here, there, there, and there. And what I'll do is I'll use the same tube I used here for this stuff. And I'll make a V notch at the first one. I'll probably just, this is a slight bend, so I'll probably put a slit in it. And then probably a very narrow V notch or a widened slot in it there. And I'll just measure out here and mark my distances from there out past the end. Looks like nine inches. And then from that point to that point, looks like four and a quarter inches, etc., etc. I'll, I'll mark all those out on a piece of tube, cut it, and then tack it down onto the surface bend it tack that in place so that everything's nice and neat exactly where i want it weld that up check it on the seat make sure that all my angles fit there and once that's done we'll we'll continue on and i'll draw out a piece that makes this level all the way across here because like i said i want this to kind of be my level point so i'll probably bring and just marry a piece right to that tube Bring it out this way, brace it, bring it out this way, brace it, and then those will be square to what would be the floor, and then I can just make legs and, and whatever, as I'll show you when we get in here to putting it in the car. All right, so I've marked up um, all of these points that I wanna cut, so obviously, I've left the ends just a little bit longer than I think is necessary. That way I can trim it back and set my angles when I put my uh, down legs on it to fill in across there. But we'll make these cuts real quick and then, uh, yeah, we should be able to tack this thing to the table and see what happens. point just bring the welder over I'll tack all this stuff together and then we'll make three more just gonna line this up on that line like so
check it and see what happens. It's good enough. Bolt all that down. I'll make attachment points that'll bolt in. Uh, probably put a nut through this way, put a rib nut in there, and then trim that up a little. It's not perfect. And this mess right here is why you can never have too many clamps. So I'm using these larger ones both to clamp it down this way and as a, a table to keep it up off, uh, or legs to keep it up off the table. But then I'm also clamping each one of these together um, side to side, or I guess this would technically be top to bottom. This would be the top, the bottom, and then these are the two sides as they relate to the seat anyways. So I've clamped all this stuff together so that it's clamped square and the same as the other on all angles. I'm gonna weld this craziness up and uh, yeah, do it a few more times. So these are cleaning up pretty good. Uh, just sanding them up with a flap disc. Uh, I think it's 40 grit. I'm um, just kind of hitting it up, taking the mill scale off while I'm there. And I'm gonna touch up a couple of little holes I found. Easy cheesy. dang close close enough just looking at my mock-up that I have kind of setting in the car right now um, these are stacked up fairly parallel to the floor here you can see that that sits flush right there so we're gonna call this level this section right here and so then I'll mark off from here down and from the nose down on this with a Sharpie. Get it setting roughly where we want it. And obviously it'll be a little bit further under the seat there. So what I'm going to do is set this roughly there, and they need to be about 13 inches apart, best I can tell. And I'll put a mark right up here on the front just to get it flush. Same on the back. And then I'll transfer that down to a solid brace, such as this bar that's right here. So I've got that clamped down. I've made my mark. 
what I'm going to do is come off of this square edge and just mark a line. If I can do this. Nope, I can't do it one handed here. So there and there. That's my outside. Same thing on the other side. Let me get the camera set up a little bit better. Double check here. that mark. And I like that mark. So now what I'll do is I'll chop this off. So this is the final design for it, like I said, with the exception of whether I do this piece in it or not. Um, but this will bolt through here and the slider will bolt onto this and then these bolts will go through to whatever i make for the riser to get it you know, if i just keep throwing stuff around all right so i got my four brace pieces cut these are the pieces that go on the bottom down here those are all cut ran through the wire wheel got the mill scale off of those got my seat bottoms lined up and leveled up square cut so that they're all the same both ends trimmed down ready to start welding stuff together i'm up in the air still about these caps so i think i'm just going to weld these to the bases here and then move on with the rest of the platform that rises uh, that raises it up um because i'm not sure how i want to finish that out yet i don't know if i want to do that i think it's going to definitely need the front pieces but I'm, I'm really uncertain about these smaller back pieces here. Um, I really don't think they're gonna be necessary, especially once this is welded all the way across this length right here. Um, but these front pieces, I think, are going to be needed uh, to brace this front because it's quite a long span and they do have a little bit of flex to them. So anyways, I think I'll probably end up doing that, but I'm gonna do that later. Once I kind of get the rest of everything built up, I'll, I'll go ahead and do all those little touch up parts. But I wanna try and get these fitted into the car before I really start putting a lot of stuff. That's why I'm just gonna tack uh, these brace pieces here that the sliders will attach to. I'm just gonna tack those on for now. I'm gonna tack them on here and then I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull these fairly wide on the seat and then I'm gonna bring off of these where these go this way, like so on the seat. I'm gonna bring some across the seat and then attach my sliders to those. I think that's how I'm gonna do it. But anyways, I'll, I'll keep bringing you back as I, as I figure stuff out because I'm just kind of winging it here. All right, so here's the basic layout. This is the front, that's the back. I'm gonna bias this uh, slightly to the front here. Um, it's just the way it's working out. The way this will sit is this is the angle. This piece will sit, this bent piece here, will sit here. And then the tracks will bolt onto here. You can see that these are the, uh, you can see that these are now going to center up there. Still working on some adjustments and getting everything. Um, looks like I need to, oh, yeah, those look pretty centered up on there. They're centered up anyways. I will confirm that that is the case. Um, and then, like I said, this is just temporary laying out right now, trying to figure out how I want to do this. So anyways, put a little primer in between there just so it doesn't rust up. Um, so once I get this tacked together like that, I'll come through and tack these pieces on and then, uh, we'll, we'll keep going from there and build the bases where they go down and attach these. Okay. So this is what all the craziness was about. So that fits in there. I'm going to trim this end up here to to match up to the seat a little bit better. This ends up coming out just about flush with the front there, so that'll cap off nicely. Remember, I've got a little piece that fills in here. Still haven't decided. Once I get this chopped up and cleaned up here and, and cut to match, I'll see what happens with the two corner pieces. But that's how those go together. And then you can see 
with the chair gone, what will happen is the sliders will bolt on underneath. Here, let me get you on a stand here. We'll bolt in underneath this. We're going to second slider go. Oh, there it is. So this being the front, we'll go like this. Backwards. I'll get it right eventually. So these will sit somewhere around in there, like that. This lever will operate it, allow it to slide in and out, and uh, yeah. So. One of these may get changed over and welded to the other side. They look nearly identical. So, anyways, um, that's how that's going to work. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Um, like I said, brace these up here, and uh, we'll bolt the seat directly through these points here. Probably have three. I believe one that drills all the way through a longer one and then a shorter one that attaches here and a shorter one that attaches there. Probably do that on both sides. So anyways, there you go. That's the seat mount bracket. When everyone says you can't have too many clamps, uh, they're not kidding. So while I do have more, I've used quite a few just to line all these uh, pieces up here so that my two seat bases are identical. They're clamped both directions to line up uh, vertically and horizontally with everything so that everything should go together the same. That's the goal anyways. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld the second one together and then we'll tack it all together and I'll show you the two pieces completed. So the next step is to build the seat riser uh, that all of the mechanisms that I've built right there will sit on. So I've kind of drawn out on the floor and measured uh, what the back of my transmission tunnel needs for clearance. That gives me quite a bit of clearance there. Um, so what I'm going to do is basically build kind of like a, like a one piece seat riser like you would see in a like in a Mustang or, or something like that. So I'm gonna, but I'm gonna just build it out of this square tube instead of stamped steel. And then I'll, I'll set my top height straight across. And this, this section right here will build in, I'll build it forward. Uh, and that'll become uh, the center console for the front half. And then if I do something for the back, I'll pull it off the back as well. So, but anyways, this is gonna have this shape for the, um, the rearmost front seat one. The frontmost front seat one will actually have a much steeper angle because of the, the shape of the uh, transmission tunnel. It will probably be almost not quite 90, probably 80, 85 degrees, something in, in that range as it goes around. But I'll show you that one when I get that one built. Anyways, all I did was draw it out and then uh, made my three quarter inch marks put a line right through the intersection that I use to eyeball my cuts. And I'm using this rod here just to make sure the two pieces are straight. When I set it in the car, I'll have it built completely outside the car. And when I set it in the car, I will add uh, washers on this end as I screw it down to level it all out. So there you go, moving right along. So on today's episode of just how overbuilt can a seat riser be, um, fairly robustly overbuilt, I would say. So I know it's kind of hard to see down here, but I have a bar here, a bar here, a bar here, and a bar here. So four bars over the hump, that'll allow me to put my panels on and I'll weld some quarter inch into here. 
because I will probably do my seat belt mounts through this because this is going to get bolted down through the frame. Um, I'll set this in the car and then I'll mark this bar and this bar because this one's going to be at a slight angle just because of the way the uh, door jams and stuff are shaped. Just aesthetically, that'll look better to me if it's, you know, if it follows the, the sill uh, a little bit closer. And then same thing on the other side and then be quarter inch plates welded in here that the uh, that will mount to the floor the way that the seats will mount is there will be oh, a piece welded all the way across right here which gets me the exact height that i need with this three quarter on top of here so that'll come over and box in all the way around uprights for support etc etc so I'll bring you back when uh, I get some more of that done. But I know it's kind of hard to tell since this is made out of the same stuff this is made out of. But you'll see once it goes in the car. This is the contraption that will hold the seats. This is the part that will go over the trans tunnel. This is the portion that will hold the actual seat basins. This will just get cut off flush. But as you can see, it is taking a while. So all these parts and pieces, trying to make this thing super reinforced so that, uh, like I said, I don't die if I accidentally hit something. Because I'm gonna attach my seat belts to this probably. So yeah, I want it overbuilt. But these are the things you have to do in order to try and keep all this stuff square millions and billions of clamps ignore the welding these are tacks i'm a grinder not a welder so this is kind of how i go about squaring this stuff up see i've got these long uh, pinch clamps and a t-square off of my fab table Just checking to make sure that this is square with this and I've already measured out that these are the same length and all that stuff's correct and then to make sure I'm level here I'll take some clamps with the broad foot pad put it across each side like so now I know I'm good and square that way you don't necessarily have to leave them on uh, either. So on these, what I'm doing is using these aluminum T-squares. And I'll get that eyeball. On the bottom. Clamp it down. Check that I'm still where I want to be. I cut all of these to the same length so that everything comes out the same. That looks pretty good. So I'll take another tall clamp. loose enough right now that I can make all of my adjustments make sure I'm happy with how everything is setting making sure everything's square and level at least as best as I can and once that's done I'll lock it down I feel I'm a little bit off right here
contraction, go over the 